Beyond plotting with Matplotlib and Pandas, there is another option in the form of interactive plots with Plotly. So this is particularly interesting if you want to use um, interactive plots in a web application or something like that. Note that Plotly is not installed by default in the Fluss Tools environment, so if you want to use it, then you first need to Conda install Plotly um, if you're working on Windows with Conda, or um, use pip install Plotly if you're working in a pip environment. So how does it work? How do you get Plotly um, to work? Well, uh, first you need to import it ex uh, itself. Um, second, you will need to have some graphic objects from it, and I will work, uh, use here also the plotly.offline uh, option here to uh, initialize the notebook mode. Then I am instantiating here a data frame where I'm using the uh, um, Plotly Express uh, library and to query data for continental Europe. And what I am actually want, uh, wanting to plot then is on the x-axis the year, on the y-axis the population, and the color should be then per country. So then I will need to show that figure in the browser or here in my Jupyter notebook. And then I can um, uh, use here the, that offline plot option um, to uh, to plot it based to a file name. So that is how that looks like. And you see here pops up something that is that pan option. So I can pan here along the plot. That is something that you cannot particularly do with any other um, uh, functionality that you've seen in matplotlib. So I'm panning along the years or zooming a little bit here into the details um, of particular countries. So I get here the plot two times because I used once here figure.show and once here the pio.iplot. The reason for why I implemented both options here is that one or the other command will not work with older versions of uh, a Jupyter lab or notebook. Now if you want to plot data that you have stored somewhere locally with Plotly, that is also possible. I exemplify that here with a data set that I retrieved from the FAO, that is a temperature change data set. Um, this is not in the course repository, so if you want to work with it, then um, click right click here on the CSV file, click on save link as, and then save it to your data folder. In that code block then here, I am importing again the uh, Plotly libraries. I'm initiating again the notebook mode. Um, and now I'm defining here a country filter and the month filter, which could also be something else like, uh, for the, the country filter at least, like any country that is here um, involved that could be Belgium, Finland, Austria or whatever. The month is here, I just selected one winter month and one uh, summer month here and now here I'm applying these filters to the um, to the original data frame and extra I'm extracting here um, the data frame per country and then the data frame per month one and uh, per month two. So then here my first plot here is a bar plot where I'm using now here these uh, month one and month two data to um, and for plotting them on a bar plot on uh, with Plotly. Then I'm adding here a layout. So the layout here um, applies a text filter. And then I'm adding here also for, uh, for which country that applies. And then I'm uh, um, showing here the figure with the bar plots. So if I run that now, that looks like that. So we're getting here the uh, monthly average surface temperature deviation in France in January and in July for uh, the years that are in the data set. And again here, the very nice feature here of, um, of Plotly, you can zoom into that and so on. So 
so it indicates the auto log you can do to get out again um, yeah you can also then take here a, a, sc a screenshot or just download this as a png file so what uh, plotly can also do is to work with geodata so geojson data formats I will get to that geospatial format of GeoJSON data um, in a later tutorial on uh, working with uh, geospatial data in Python. In this example, I am using now here the URL lib request library to import its URL open function. Um, I'm also importing here the JSON library and I'm still working here with pandas. What I'm doing here, or I want to do here now, is with that um, URL open function, I'm downloading a JSON file here from a GitHub repository uh, as a response. And now I'm converting here with json.load uh, this response into something that I can work with. So this is per county data in the United States. Now I am using here. Uh, um, a pandas read CSV to, um, right, to read in here that CSV file that lives in a repository, so that lives somewhere online, huh? so that works. And now um, I just defining the data types that pips is a string. Now I, I will additionally import here again the uh, plotly.express uh, library. If you remember the um, a tutorial on packages and libraries. This is not the perfect place to put an import. I just put it here um, for uh, the sake of the order of uh, steps that I'm taking here. Now I am uh, creating here a figure that is a px.chloropyrimplace map box. So I'm creating here a map with the GeoJSON uh, file of the counties. Um, the locations here are the FIPS of the data table I defined here. Um, the color here is the function of one uh, particular data set here in the counties. UNMP, you might guess it, stands for unemployment. Um, here I can define different uh, color scales. I can uh, define color ranges. Um, different map box styles are available. Uh, the zoom can be predefined. Uh, also where you want to uh, center at in your map. I'm also defining here an um, um, opacity and now I just add here then also a label for that unemp because it's a little bit uh, unclear what that means and I'm uh, translating that now here to unemployment rate. Um, I'm also updating here the mar margin of that figure and if I run that I get here uh, the figure after a couple of uh, minutes that it takes to load data. So now we get here the unemployment rate. We can zoom here in again and do that and see where regions of higher or lower unemployment rates are. So these are just a couple of examples for uh, using Plotly for this interactive uh, plotting. There are many, many more interesting features of Plotly for statistical analysis if they're geospatial or just showing some measurement data. To get more information, I invite you to uh, visit plotly.com. Thanks for watching this tutorial on Plotly.